Well, good morning. What a great way to start our service together, a reminder of the energy and life within us. Good morning and welcome to Newport Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you're here with us today. This week I was reminded of what it is we're doing here as we gather together at church uh, via the sweet folks at the Cooperative Baptist Church that I worked for while I was in college. They shared this week that the church should be a community where messed up people are welcome. Where outcasts are loved where underdogs find a champion, where the hopeless find hope, where the friendless find connection. They always put on their big sign outside by a major highway that says, we reserve the right to accept everyone, no exceptions. And friends, this is a good week to remember what we've been called to do as the church as we've announced a pretty significant change that's coming up. Hopefully you received a letter in your email on Friday afternoon, but we wanted to acknowledge that session has been in discernment for the last few months, taking seriously our role as leaders and visionaries for the congregation. And we've decided to make a change in our music program, focusing on a better blend and balance of musical styles and instruments. Uh, We had a chance to discuss that more in depth with Chris Vincent this week, offering to end our relationship with him at the end of October. Um, After some thought, he came back and he would like to um, end his time with us uh, on October 6th. I'll pause there and just invite us to take a deep breath together. I know that change is hard, and rarely is it something we seek on our own accord. But we approach this transition with gratitude for Chris and all of his gifts and contributions to this congregation, and we wish him all the best in what's next for him. Now, I imagine there's some questions, um, so I want to be upfront uh, and open in our communication here. I'm sure you're asking, what does this mean? What are we doing? Um, Wanted to let you know that we'll be trying out some new musical styles and instruments while holding on to some of the traditions that we know and love. Uh, Of course, we don't know exactly what that means, and sometimes that's a little scary. Uh, But I do know that Christ will be leading the way. And in my line of work, that's really all I need to know on a day-to-day basis. We'll keep you up to date as we know more of what this is going to look like, um, and we'll do our best to be in communication with all of you during this transition. We also wanted to name our appreciation and support of our choir. Wonderful folks here constantly and just faithfully. Um, and we want you to know that we are committed to continuing this offering. This is, um, has nothing to do with our choir, and we want to continue to support them. Again, we don't know exactly what that will look like, um, but we will do our best to keep you in the loop. Some folks might also be asking what this blend language means. Um, and this blend concept is really important to us, as we have a wide variety of uh, perspectives and interests here in our congregation. And we seek to have a blend of both traditional and contemporary music, um, wanting to kind of match our energy in the congregation, um, as well as pursuing, uh, inviting more of the congregation and more of the community to worship with us, particularly in our music. So this is not a total shift. You'll come in next week and we'll have fog machines and loud guitars. (laughs) No worries there. Um, But we will be trying some things out. And in that process, we really uh, cherish your feedback, your opinions, your thoughts and ideas. Um, This is a space for us to discern together as the congregation. You are a huge piece of this. So the biggest thing you might be asking is, what now? What can we be doing in this transition? And I have three things. Number one is feedback, like we just talked about. We would love to be in conversation with you 
um, feel free to reach out to me or to session as we continue these conversations together. Number two is your patience. Um, we are taking a big leap of faith here and we don't know what everything is going to look like. Um, hopefully you know from me by now that I will do my very best to be in communication with you and keeping you up to date. And we do appreciate your patience in this journey. And lastly, and probably most importantly, we solicit your prayers. Um, again, we seek to be Christ-led in all of the things we do here, especially in our worship. Um, and we would greatly appreciate the opportunity to be in prayer with one another. If you would be praying for us, uh, we'll be praying for you. And prayer is an important piece of this because this is already a significant part of who we are, Newport. We remind you that you can submit your written prayer requests, the things on your hearts and minds as we come to worship every week. Um, you can find our handy-dandy written prayer request cards in the friendship folders that are in the center aisle that get passed through uh, during worship. You can uh, put those in the offering plate as it goes by later in the service. If you join us online and you have a prayer request to share, you're welcome to put that in the chat. Um, and that will get passed up to me as well, so you can still participate in that part of our ministry on Sunday morning. We also have a prayer chain, um, an email that goes out throughout the week as we hear different requests. Um, if that's something you're interested in or you'd like to know more about how to get on that list or how to share a prayer request, I'll invite you to reach out to our office. Um, Peggy Liner is our office administrator, and she would be happy to get you connected. That was a lot of information. But friends, I hope the number one message you can hear through all of these updates and all of these uh, parts of who we are is that you are welcome in this space. Whatever you might be feeling, however um, this week may have treated you or the things that you are dreading or looking forward to in the week ahead, this is a place for you. And we are so glad that you have joined us this morning. Welcome to worship. Friends, please join me in this responsive call as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. From sunrise to sunset, let us praise God's holy name. With the wisdom of the aged and the energy of the young, let us praise God's holy name. In our work, in our ho homes, and in all we do, let us praise God's holy name. Let us praise the Lord with all our hearts. We worship God always.
Friends, please join me as we confess our sins against God and one another. Lord Jesus, we have sinned times without number and been guilty of pride and unbelief and of neglect to seek you in our daily lives. Our sins and shortcomings present us with a list of accusations, but we thank you that they will not stand against us, for all have been laid on Christ. But deliver us from every evil habit, every interest of former sins, everything that dims the brightness of your grace in us, everything that prevents us taking delight in you. Amen. This is the good news of the gospel, and it is for you and for all. Whatever you have done, whatever you have failed to do, whatever, whoever you are, whoever you wish you were but are not, you are accepted. You are welcomed. You are washed clean. You are raised up. You are forgiven. You are set free. In the love of Jesus Christ, you are loved forever. In the waters of baptism, we are set free to let go what is old and broken, to live a new life in the resurrection, and to follow together a joyful way. After Jesus Christ, our loving Savior, thanks be to God. Good morning. Hi. Let's sit. How are you? I saw you guys, one of you, brought, at least one of you brought a really good book this morning. Which one of you is reading Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yeah. yeah. Is his life pretty tidy or is it pretty messy? messy. It's a pretty messy life, isn't it? Yeah, that fits perfectly with what I was gonna talk about today. I was folding clothes this week. Do any of you help your family by folding clothes? Oh, uh-oh, there we go, yeah? Okay, yes, okay, good. I love folding clothes, not great on doing the wash, but man, when I can fold clothes, I get to make everything nice and tidy, right? Just like this towel. What do we use towels for? What are all the things you could think of that we could use towels for? What do we do? Dry yourself. We dry ourselves, like when we take a shower or when we go swimming or something. Okay, what else could we use a towel for? Oh, yeah. You have first-hand first -hand experience with that? Okay, yeah, clean up spills. What else could we use this? I mean, this is big. What could we use it for? A blanket, yeah, because it's pretty heavy, huh? What else? Do you ever make forts? Like by taking blankets and towels and stuff and putting them over chairs and tables and you make a fort? This would make a good fort, huh? Well, if we, if we do that kind of stuff with a towel, isn't it gonna be all messy and kind of all stirred up like this? What if I want it folded again? Could you help me? You could, okay. Will you help me? You take that in and all his victims. Should we do this or will you go this way? Okay. This way first. This way. Should we fold it like this? Beautiful. Okay. And then this here. Okay, can you hang on to that end? Perfect. Okay. And should we fold this way? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. Oh, perfect. See, sometimes when we make a mess, we can't necessarily clean it up all by ourselves, can we? We have to ask for help. Have any of you ever had something in your life that makes you feel all messy and stirred up and you have to ask maybe mom or dad or a friend to help you? Maybe, yeah, uh-huh. In a story in the Bible, some of Jesus' friends were out. Well, I think their day probably started out like this towel when I first brought it, pretty tidy. And they went out on some water. 
and a big storm came along and they got really scared and they got all messed up, kind of like we messed up the towel. Inside they were nervous and they were frightened and they didn't know what to do. But they figured it out. They asked Jesus for help and he kind of folded the mess that was inside of them and he made the storm go away and then the disciples were just like this nice folded towel again. They weren't nervous inside, they weren't scared, and life was tidy for a while. And so next time you fold clothes, or maybe next time you offer to help mom and dad fold clothes, I want you to remember that things that are messy can get all tidy, especially if we ask Jesus to help us. Make sense? Good. Will you stand and pass the piece with me? She got it up. Okay. Hands out. You ready? And we'll say, the peace of Christ be with you. Please stand and share God's love with one another.
Please pray with me. Shine the light of your word on the path ahead, O God. Help us choose the way of your wisdom so we may bear fruit that is pleasing to you and shine your light into the world around us. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning is from the prophet Jeremiah. Listen now for a word from the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to your dreams that you dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Our second scripture reading for this morning finds us in Mark chapter 4. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. Then a great windstorm arose, and the waves began to beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are many things I love about my mother. And this week, one of my favorite things about her is how she sends me sweet and funny things she finds on social media. I recently learned that there's actually a term for this. It's called pebbling. Pebbling is a way to sh of showing love and affection through small gestures inspired by the behavior of penguins bringing pebbles to their partners. It's a way to communicate without traditional displays of affection. And my mom's pebbling is particularly meaningful to me since she lives on the other side of the country. And I'm especially grateful for this kindness my mom extends me this week because one of the videos she sent me recently just wouldn't leave my mind. It's a short clip from The Parenting Project with a man named Matt Cohn called A Letter to a Four-Year-Old. Dear Charlie, it starts, I love you very much. 
And this is a fact. Not like the earth goes around the sun is a fact, because one day it won't. Not like something written in stone is a fact, because wind and rain can make the past of a fact like that. No, this is a fact like up is up and down is down. This truth is an immovable object, a law like gravity or the speed of light. As I write this, you've just turned four years old, and at times, I'll be honest, you've been a real pain in the butt. (laughs) That's nothing personal. Literally all toddlers carry this trait. I hope one day you'll experience this for yourself, and that when you do, I'm still nearby to see it. But you're also kind and funny and imaginative. And toddlers carry these traits, too. And these are traits that a lot of people tend to lose as they get older, which is a real shame. Toddlers are better than adults in every possible way that matters. So here it is. The purpose of this note, here is what I hope for you. I don't wish for you to be rich or famous or super smart or that you marry into royalty, or that yours is the first footprint on Mars. I wish only that you keep as much of who you are right now as possible, and carry that into the person you become. Because who you are right now as a toddler is something remarkable. You have no self-doubt No shame, embarrassment, or awkwardness. You think love is not something to pursue, but something to share. You think rain is an opportunity and snow a wonder. Weather isn't good or bad, it's just a backdrop to the greatest show on earth in which you are the star. You think the garden is a jungle, and pebbles are treasure, a bathtub, a pirate ship. You think farting is hilarious, always. <laughs> Your jokes make absolutely no sense, but they are never at someone else's expense. You think broccoli is disgusting, and you are not afraid to say so loudly. You don't care if cereal is rich in fiber, only whether if it comes with a free toy or a shape like a UFO. You think money is just paper and metal, that home is a castle, but the nursery you go to every Wednesday and Friday, this is a place where you can fall in love sometime between breakfast and lunchtime. Your only experience of sadness or a broken heart is a ball over a fence or a cuddly toy left on a bus. And more than anything, me and your mom wish this could always be the case. It hurts to know that it won't be. But no matter what comes, I hope that you'll always remember this time. And you'll always remember to be good and do good. Love, Dad. I won't tell you how many tissues I needed in the span of that four-minute video. But friends, I needed that video this week. I needed that video to remind me not to take myself too seriously. I needed that video to be reminded of the values of youth. I needed that video as permission to feel all that I need to feel. And I think this can happen to any of us on any given week, any given day even. Hard things happen. And I love that both of our scripture texts this morning aren't afraid to hide this fact that hard things happen sometimes. Jeremiah, in particular, is delivering some tough news 
that these people who've lost everything and are now living in exile after unimaginable pain and loss, they're going to be in this hard season for quite a bit longer. So long, in fact, God is telling them to get comfortable. Unpack your suitcase, take off your coat, and stay a while kind of comfortable. And the disciples on the boat are rightfully, in my opinion, incredibly frustrated with Jesus that their boats are literally sinking, and he has the audacity to be upset with them. But one of the best commentaries I read this week helped me make sense of this, helped me reconcile why hard things happen, or at least start to. And they wrote, instead of saying there's nothing to be afraid of, the whole truth would be for a mother comforting her frightened child in the night to say, don't be afraid, you are not alone. The easy part of that truth, which every child figures out sooner or later, is that some things that frighten us are real, and some things are not. But the rest of that truth, the deeper truth that only faith in the God who raised Jesus from the grave can remind us and teach us, is that even though there are real and fearsome things in this life, they need not paralyze us. They need not have dominion over us. They need not own us, because we are not alone in the boat. It's in this spirit that I can read all of Scripture as God's letter to a four-year-old of sorts. God's encouragement that it's going to be hard and it's going to be messy. My towels never look that good, Sue. (laughs) But we are still able to be creative and free, open and curious and invitational just like Matt Cohn wanted for his son on his fourth birthday. It's important to note here that Jesus never says there's nothing to be afraid of. This Galilean storm was indeed fearsome, as are the wind and waves that threaten us. So rather, Jesus asks, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And although we often confuse them, saying there's nothing to be afraid of is a very different thing than saying do not be afraid. The hard truth is that these fearsome things are real. Isolation, pain, illness, meaninglessness, rejection, money problems, failure. As we grow in faith, we come to understand that even though such fearsome things are very real, they do not have the last word. They do not have ultimate power over us because reigning over this world of fearsome things is a God who is mightier, a God who is kinder, a God who is far more loving far more flexible, far more accessible than we could ever imagine. And that is a truth of our Christian identity that is stronger than anything we have faced in the past and anything that will come in our future. God is with us. God will never leave nor forsake us, even if it looks like God is just sleeping on the cushions on the front of the boat. Now, perhaps you hearing this just in my voice isn't totally convincing. No worries, I leave space for that. So perhaps we should look to a childhood hero for so many of us to see what he has to say about this. You know... My mother used to say, a long time ago, 
whenever there would be any really cat catastrophe that was on the, in the movies or, or on the air, she would say, always look for the helpers. There, were, there will always be helpers, you know, even just on the sidelines. That's why I think that if news programs could make a conscious effort of showing rescue teams, of, of showing who, uh, medical people, anybody who is coming into a place where there's a tragedy, to be, to be sure that they include that. Because if you look for the helpers, you'll know that there's hope. Notice that our friend, Mr. Rogers, doesn't say hard things don't happen. He said, when they do, look for the helpers. Look for the proof that you're not alone, and there you will find hope. And that's it. That's the whole point of this note, the whole point of this sermon. That is my hope and God's hope for you and for us. Just like we hear from the prophet Jeremiah, for surely I know the plans I have for you. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. I believe this is true with all of my heart, Newport. It's not always going to be easy, but we will never have to do it alone. My prayer for us as we navigate this upcoming transition in our music program, as we approach another contentious election in our country, as we face really hard realities of life, my prayer is that our identity can be found in what brings us together. I pray that we might have no self-doubt, no shame, embarrassment, or awkwardness. I pray that we can see love not as something to pursue, but something to share. I pray that we can be intentional in leaving pebbles along the way so that everyone can follow in this path of love. And as we journey together, I pray that we can be rooted and grounded in God's love, which will never leave nor forsake us no matter storm that we might face. Amen.
After we hear the good news, we say what we believe. Often these words come from the church's creeds and confessions. In these writings, we remember and tell the world who we are, what we believe, and how we should live according to God's word. Our affirmation today comes from the new creed of 1968 from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. The letter of James invites us to show gentleness born of God's wisdom through our good works. The gifts we offer to God support many good works through our congregation and the work Presbyterians undertake together around the world. May they bear much fruit in Jesus' name. We remind you that you are invited to put your written prayer requests in the offering plate as it goes by as a way of participating in our community. If you consider Newport your church home, we invite you to share an offering. If you are visiting with us today, please do not feel obligated to give as you are our guest. Ushers, please come forward.
Wise and faithful God, we offer our gifts to you in thanksgiving for your gifts to us in Christ and in creation. Bless these gifts and the good works they will support so that the world may know your wisdom and faithfulness through Christ our Lord. Well, friends, it is true that God is with us in life and in death. Um, Unfortunately, we are reminded of that this week as we share the passing of Tony Lopez. We can gather in the sure hope of the resurrection while also leaning into the truth of grief and hard times. And so we go to God in prayer with all the things we might be feeling and all the things we might be carrying with us. As we pray together this morning, I'll invite you to participate in a response with us. In each of the different sections, I'll end saying, Lord, in your mercy, and I'll invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people and places, we come to you in prayer, giving thanks that you are with us in all situations. You bring us strength and courage when we are anxious or afraid. You provide wisdom and direction when we face choices and challenges. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. In our prayers, enlarge our love and sharpen our vision so that we may serve the world you love more faithfully. We pray for those who dwell on the margins, particularly the margins of the economy, facing challenges of unemployment, financial insecurity, and rising costs. Give leaders in government, business, and labor a mutual vision that reflects the values of your kingdom so that everyone has enough resources and respect to live well and wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those facing famine and drought this year and for all those who have lost everything through fire, storm, or conflict. Bring support to those peoples and agencies who work to alleviate suffering and help them rebuild lives and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for those who work for peace and mercy in a world divided by bitter conflicts. And for those who keep peace and lead negotiations in international disputes. Give them wisdom and perseverance. We remember those who face violence, persecution, or discrimination daily. Send your spirit to protect the vulnerable and shame the vicious so that justice and well-being will prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for teachers, students, administrators, and support staff as another school year is well underway. Thank you for the gift of education, for deepening insight into this ever-changing world, and the ability to distinguish truth from error. Grant all those in education this year mutual respect and commitment to the shared venture of learning. Help us to bring the benefits of our education to our life of faith and give all of us a teachable spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those struggling with pain or illness, disability or daunting diagnosis. Stay by their side. We especially pray this morning for Stephanie that a job possibilities become a reality. We pray for Jerry and Kathy and the whole Howard family, as well as all of us who are blessed to call Kathy a friend. 
We pray with Marianne and Mary as they move this week. We pray for Jessie as she begins another round of chemotherapy to treat cancer. We pray for the Lopez family in this season of vulnerability and loss. May we all surround them and surround one another with love that accompanies us with grief. So, oh God, unite us in love, whatever we're facing, and grant us the peace and hope you have promised us in Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. actually invite you all to have a seat for just a moment. It would be my wish that your only experience of sadness or a broken heart was a ball over a fence or a cuddly toy left on a bus. More than anything, I do wish this could be the case, and it hurts to know that it won't be. But no matter what comes, I hope you'll always remember that you are not alone. And you'll always remember to be good and do good. Friends, that's the exact spirit we have here at Newport. That's who we have been and who we will continue to be no matter what comes our way. In the coming months, in the coming years, we are made to be together. And I see that as a blessing. And so I wanted to have you all sit just so you could see better as we continue to learn our uh, benediction together in sign language. We've been learning the last two weeks that Christ goes before. And now is the really tricky part. So plan is just two separate kind of by your shoulders plan, straight hands facing towards each other, plan. Prepare is very similar. (laughs) So we're just going to kind of do four iterations in front of us. So plan and prepare your way. All right, so plan and prepare your way. Look at that, you're experts already. (laughs) Keep that in mind, friends, as we leave this place to celebrate someone's big birthday that happened last week, i.e. Betty Spawn. We have a 
birthday cake to celebrate her um, at coffee hour today. And uh, after that, I would invite all of us to join for ACE class at 1130. And as we do all of these things, and as we hopefully do them all together, may you know that Christ goes before you to plan and prepare your way. The Holy Spirit walks beside you as friend and companion for the journey. And most importantly, the God of redemption persists above you, calling and reconciling your life now and forevermore. Amen.